Hi everybody, thank you for joining our Modernize Your Workforce with Office 365 tools. Um, we are excited to have you guys on the call. We're going to start in just a few minutes at about 10.05. I just want to give a few extra moments for folks to join. Thanks so much. Hi everybody, thanks again for joining our Modernize Your Workforce with Office 365 Tools webinar. Um, I think we're going to kick it off and get started. Um, just so everybody knows, this webinar is being recorded so that it's available after the webinar for you guys to review. And for those on the call, we will send out the deck afterwards. Who we are, um, we have Kelly Edinger on the call today. She's the Director of Solutions Delivery here at Amaxra. We also have Libby Mankey, who is our Senior Business Analysis with Amaxra. And myself, I'm Cassidy Markey. I am our Marketing Project Manager at Amaxra. So we are all part of our Solutions Delivery and Marketing team here, and we're excited to share this knowledge with you guys. What we will learn today, um, we're going to go over some of the Microsoft Office 365 tools that help improve productivity in the workplace. Um, those tools include Microsoft Planner, Microsoft Teams, Office 365 Groups, and SharePoint Task Lists. All of these tools kind of work together, um, so you guys will be able to see how they intertwine and different tips and tricks so that you can make the most of your day and your business. So with that, let's kick it off with a poll. I'm going to launch our first poll, and you guys can go ahead and um, vote. The question here is, what's your most common method for collaborating with your team? Looks like we got everybody. 
So we'll go ahead and close the poll. And it looks like 75% said email, um, followed by 25% that said uh, formal meetings. So I think that's pretty consistent with what we do. Is get a lot of our communication and collaboration comes in through email, but um, we found we would like a better system because because I don't want to save emails for no. the next three years yes. to figure out what's going on. Or deep dive my inbox to find that one <laughs> attachment that um, someone sent me five months ago. <laughs> so hopefully some of the things you guys will learn today will help reduce that email clutter and show you guys different ways to communicate and collaborate across your teams um, in an effective way. So with that, I'm going to start off by talking about Microsoft Planner. What is Microsoft Planner? Um, Planner lets you organize products, pr excuse me, projects, share files, assign tasks, and chat with other people on your team in a centralized location. It really offers a visual aspect, which you guys will see, um, and it's very simple and organized, so it's great for everyday use. This is actually one of my favorite tools within Office 365, so I'm excited to share it with you. Um, with that, I'm going to jump here into the demo. Um, in order to get to your planner tool, you will want to go to your Office 365 account. If you're curious to know if your Office 365 subscription has planner, um, you can contact us and we'd be happy to share more details with you guys. Um, but what you're looking at here is what's called the planner hub. So you can see right off the gate that it provides the visual aspect. Um, you can see what tasks are late, what tasks are completed, and what tasks are not started by a simple color code. Um, you can also notice that I have some of my tasks are favoritized, and then I have all my other plans which are listed here below. It's easy to simply move tasks to your favorite plans by just clicking these three dots and then pressing add to favorites and it will move a plan up to your favorites. Um, all of your favorite plans are also listed right here on the left side of the screen so it makes it easy to navigate to them and then all other plans are listed right below. So with that I'm going to show you guys how to start a new plan and it's really simple. Um, to start a new plan you just create new plan and then you can name your plan. So let's name this one plan company barbecue. When you create a new plan, you automatically get an email address that is associated with your plan. So this email address is pretty cool because you can actually email anybody that is a member of your plan using Outlook and it's an easy way to collaborate on what's happening within your plan. Um, you also have the choice to make this plan public or private by a simple click of the button. So let's make this plan private and you can add a plan description here and then all you do is press create plan. When you create a new plan you also create a Microsoft group, a shared OneNote file, a shared calendar on Outlook, um, and, a SharePoint site. and a SharePoint site. So there's a, an abundance of different things that you get with creating a new plan. So once a new plan is created it's going to take you here to this home screen which is your plan. And you can see we don't have anything in here yet. So let's get started by creating a few tasks. So how about make invitations. You can just press enter and you can see it drops it down right there below. Um, create visual for event. Order catering. Make seating chart. Plan entertainment. Is my typing. Uh, make guest list. And that's a good amount of things. So you can see now we have a few tasks that have been created. Um, when you create a task, you also have the option to set a due date or add an assignment owner right to the task card, and that's just from this main screen. This is the to-do list that started with the plan, um, but you can also create different buckets. So for this, I'm going to create a marketing bucket. I'm going to create a bucket for logistics. You could even create a bucket based on a person. So if I wanted to have tasks for a member of our team, <clears throat> like Kelly K, or if I wanted to have an admin bucket, I can easily do that. 
One of my favorite things about Planner is that everything is drag and drop. So you can actually take your tasks and drag them, drag them to the correct bucket. So order catering might be for the admin. Create a visual could be marketing. Make invitations sounds like a marketing task. I'm going to have Kelly Kay make the guest list, and we'll do a seating chart is a logistics, and so is planning entertainment. So now we have everything organized across the board of what we need to get done to plan our company barbecue. The next thing that I would do here is add members to this task. So if you go right up here to the top screen, um, you can do a drop down menu, and this allows you to add members across your organization. So I can search different people within our organization. Let's add Kelly Kraut to this. Let's add Alan. And I think that's everybody we're going to have work with us on this plan. You can easily remove people again just by right clicking here and pressing remove from plan. These are also drag and droppable. So if I want Greg to make the, well actually Kelly's doing that. So let's actually give that to Kelly. And now we have two people on the plan. Um, We'll have Alan order catering. We'll have Kelly do the seating chart. Kelly create visuals. And we'll have Alan make invitations. So that's an easy way to kind of organize your plan right out the gate. Um, when you want to get more information for each of the tasks, you can click on a task card. So you can actually click on. Kelly make, added a task. Did she? Yeah. She stopped telling me what to do. <laughs> you should add a comment to that. Yeah, so this makes it really collaborative. Dynamic. Right. Um, so you can have others join the tasks at the same time. So if I click on the task, stop telling me what to do, um, it opens <laughs> up a task card. And within the task card, since Kelly clearly doesn't want to do anything, um, <laughs> we'll just assign this to Alan. No, I think you should have her due date be yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can switch the bucket here. So if we want to make this under the to-do list, we can change it there. And we can change her progress to not started. And we also have the option to change the start date, which let's say is not started, and the due date to the 30th. So at this time, this is a late task. If I X out of this, I can see right here on my task card that because of this red flag, this task is um, flagged for late. What were those um, color-coded tabs that I saw? Yeah, so if I go back into one of the tasks, so let's go into make seating chart. Um, right here on the right-hand side, there's a list of different color codes. And you can label these whatever you want to. So maybe by priority, high, medium, and low. And then you can make these ones whatever you want. So sometimes I'll do something like this task requires a feedback request. And this one requires more info needed. And this one needs approval. So if you set those up like that, is it just on that task? It is just on that task, and you can do multiple color codes. So if this is a make seating chart is a high priority, um, and you also need more info as to maybe who the guests are, and it's going to need approval when it's finalized, you could do three different colors if you wanted. Hmm. Um, and then you just press the X, and you'll see it kind of flags it right here on the outside of the card when you're in the main plan. Um, so if I go back into the seating chart, let's change the progress on this one to in progress. And let's, um, if we scroll down the card here, we can see that there's a comment section at the bottom. This is really valuable too, especially when you have subscribed to email updates, um, because you can get all of those live updates right to your Outlook account. So since this one needs approval, maybe we could write in the comments, waiting on approval from Kelly. And then we can post it. And so anybody across this plan, all of the members that we've added, have clear visibility into what the status update is on this specific task. And you can also see, going back out to the card view, that there's a little circle here indicating that this is in progress. And there's a comment box here indicating that there's a comment on this task. Um, so maybe a question or a feedback request or whatever it may be. 
I'm going into another task. Let's change this one to in progress as well, and let's change the due date to the 22nd on this one. And we'll say the start date is the 8th. Um, you also have the option here to create a checklist. So this is make invitations. So maybe it's um, create a design, find a company to order with, and create a guest, and let's say um, number of invites. So as you're working through your task, you can show this on the outside of the card if you want to. Um, you can check things off as you're going through them to see where you're at in the progress. You also have the option to type a description here or add an attachment. So maybe you want to add an attachment of a design that you've looked at or a link that links to a company um, you're potentially going to order with. So everything is saved within this task. It makes it really easy when you're going in and um, looking for information on a specific task in your plan. Um, so if I X out again of the task, there's no saving in Planner. Everything automatically saves, which makes it easy. Um, and let's color code this as well. Now you can see here that there are two out of three things completed. It's an in-progress task, um, and it has a due date of 622, so we can tell that it's not overdue. Um, so now that we have a, a good start to our plan here, I wanted to show you guys some of the other options that are available. Um, with Planner, it really is out of the box, so there's not a lot of customizing options available. If you're looking for more of a customized solution, we have other options which we'll share a little bit with you guys on later today. Um, but you can see by clicking on the gear here that there's not a lot of options. So Planner is a really kind of what you see is what you get. Um, it works really well for me because it's really straightforward and clear and organized and, and visual, um, but it's not very customizable. Um, if you click on the three dots, you can see some other options that are available to you. Um, you can click Calendar, which will take you to your shared Outlook calendar with everybody on your team member, team members. Um, you can view your One Notebook. Um, you can edit your plan, leave your plan, you can manage your team members. And one thing I always encourage people to do is this subscribe to email updates. That way you get the live updates right to your Outlook. Um, if you click here on Charts, this will take your plan that we're still in, the plan company barbecue, into a really visual perspective. Um, so you can see all of your tasks that are not started, in progress, and completed. Um, you can see them by member, so who's doing what. So you can see Greg hasn't started anything, Alan's about 50-50, Kelly really hasn't started anything, and she has you know, one thing in progress. <laughs> yeah. So it makes it easy to see you know, who's where and who's falling behind and maybe who needs to have tasks reassigned. So how would you reassign the tasks? So let's say Alan's late and he's got three tasks, but Greg could take on his late task maybe. Yeah, great question. So if you look over here to the right, you can see tasks, and right now there's no grouping. So these are all the tasks across our plan. I can look at tasks assigned to, and maybe I notice, like you're saying, um, Greg needs some help with one of, or Alan needs some help with yeah. one of his tasks. So this task that Alan has fallen behind on, it's already overdue. We can open it up right here, and we can click the plus, and then we can assign it to, let's say, Kelly. Mm -hmm. And now we have two people assigned to this task, so if I want to remove Greg, I can do that as well, but right now we're going to make this a collaborative effort for the both of them. You can, um, you can just X him on the assigned section, so if you open it back up, just so, Oops. and yeah. just hit the X next to Alan, he'll be removed. And now we just have the one on our Kelly, so we'll update that. Um, here. Now Kelly's really not performing. Well. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can also group it's this Friday. by yeah, <laughs> progress, um, so you can see what's not started, what's in progress, and what's completed. And you can also group it um, by buckets, so different tasks um, in each category. So whatever visual works best for you. Something else that's cool that I don't know if you've seen before, you can actually click on the section in the chart, um, actually the bar chart. And it'll go to that particular task, and then you can assign it from there. And too. then you can open it right up. Yep. 
there's about 20 different ways to get to whatever you're looking at, so that okay. makes it yeah. really awesome. I find this is a good place to um, really look at everybody's tasks and move stuff around. Um, another view that you guys might find helpful is my task. So if you want to look specifically at what just you're working on, you can look at it in this view, and this is on your main navigation over here. So I can see what I've not started, what's in progress, and what's completed. And is that just for this plan, or is it across all your plans? Um, you have an option. So if you go over here to the right, you can do grouped by, and this is progress just on a specific plan, the plan company barbecue. Mm -hmm. Or you can do by plan, and it will do all of my plans across the board and all of my tasks. Nice. Yeah, so it makes it really easy. There are a ton of different options. I really love um, the planner tool and I find it super help, useful um, in my everyday work. All right, then we're back. So with that, um, as you guys know, Planner is a quick and easy way to collaborate, assign tasks to different teammates. Um, you can add documents and details right to the task. You can manage your personal tasks and as you plan um, a task or as you're planning a task or a plan that you're owning, um, you can manage your team and have clear visibility to what everybody's doing at a given time. Awesome. And with that, we're going to go to another poll. Oh. Maybe. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> okay, so what are some of your biggest collaboration hurdles? Team members not being in right places at the right time, too many different application or methods of assigning and tracking tasks, too much time tracking down the latest and most accurate information, none were perfect, which is Kelly's favorite. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, woo, we've got people 20% voted, so let's see if more folks are going to vote. We got 60%. See, I'm not the only one that thinks I'm perfect. <laughs> Someone shares your sense of humor, I see. <laughs> um. They're actually perfect. <laughs> oh, I don't know why you I'm them. sure you are. Please give us a call. We'd like to talk to you. Um, okay, so I'm going to close it. So um, the results are 50% are saying too many different applications or methods of assigning tracking tasks. 25% uh, said spending too much time tracking down the latest and most accurate information. And 25% of you think that you're perfect. And so, you no, know that you're perfect. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. So next, the next tool we're going to take a look at. So can, actually, can we call out the spending or the too many different applications and methods of assigning and tracking tasks? So part of this is, um, you know, going through all these different tools. Um, Office 365 comes with a bunch of different ways for you to work, and so this this webinar is not to say you should use all of these. It's really we're trying to show you what each one does, and that way you can pick whichever one works the best for your team because everybody kind of collaborates in different ways. Absolutely. Okay, so next we're going to talk about Microsoft Teams. So what are Microsoft Teams? It's an entirely new experience that brings together people, conversations, content, along with tools that the teams need so they can easily co collaborate to achieve more. And um, let's with that, um, it is something that you will need to have activated. So if you don't have access to Microsoft Teams, you should talk to your admin to make sure that it is um, activated for you to access if you don't see it. Um, where you can go to find it, um, hold on a sec, oops, is also um, in your Office 365, you'll see that there is a section for, if I can find it, where did it go? I know they used to make them different colors, and that oh, a little bit. I know it does make it hard them. to see it. People, it's so like not in right here. <laughs> there. <laughs> the last oh, Lord. Right here. I'm not going to open it online. I actually have it open um, as the desktop application because uh, I already have one built. It does take a little bit to um, launch it initially. So, um, but where you can go to do that um, is is by going to that gear, and I've created a team called the Rock Stars of Floor 24. And what comes with the initial team is a general channel. So they, you can create multiple channels that basically, um, this is the general channel for everybody. I created another channel called Annual Summer Picnic. Um, it's just as easy as saying add a channel. 
Uh, one thing that you need to be aware of is that everyone within the team can see the channels. So um, really the, the control of who accesses the information is at that team level, not the channel level. So um, would, this be the same, would channels be the same idea of the buckets that Cassidy was creating in Planner? Sure, and look, it says whipping, whipping it up because, because they like those cute sayings. I do too. So let's take a look at what the annual summer picnic folks are doing. Um, okay, so they're basically starting to talk about it. Alan here has said it's time to start planning the annual summer picnic. This is a comment that he's added. Um, there's four replies. People came in and said, oh, you know, he's like, what theme should we do this year? People started giving some examples here. Tropical theme, circus. Um, oh, this person's saying kids will never go to the circus ever again <laughs> <laughs> because they're closed now. Um, no, I'm no politics. Anyways, so um, so what happened was Julian said, "Hey, let's do a poll," and he did something here called Polly. So um, that's There's interesting. I I think it's Polly because it's a parrot. Oh. Polly the parrot. <laughs> you can choose what you like. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, looks like people started voting on this, and they said, "Oh." Carnival and traditional is what people are really getting into. So um, they're pretty close. So I'm going to actually start a new poll, and this is how I do it. Once you've set up Polly, I say at Polly. Oh, let's make sure. There you go. At Polly, which one is our best employee? Favorite. <laughs> Theme. I want to narrow it down. Oh, so we've got tropical and carnival. So I'm going to say carnival, tropical. I'm going to hit enter. Oh, magic. Now people can start voting. I'm going to vote for tropical. This is the part of the webinar that I like to point out that Teams is super, super useful for a lot of serious business cases, but Libby likes to make the webinar completely fun. <laughs> I, it's my imaginary work <laughs> place, and that place has fun, okay? <laughs> so um, you can see up here we've added uh, the poly tab up here, and you can add tabs up here and customize this, and this gives me the analytics behind my different polls, so it can give me some of that information. It tells me tw 12 people voted. Um, I can click on this uh, to see the 42 per oh. It's not telling me how many people voted on that. I wonder why. Okay, well, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, it does. Five. That's what that. Okay, see, so five and four. I just need glasses. I'm wearing glasses. Um, <laughs> okay, the other thing you can do is you can add these add-ons up here. I've added some. You can add a particular PowerPoint or um, file. And what I've done is I've added a Word document just to show you what that looks like. I wanted to show the flyer for the picnic kind of as an advertisement. So it actually loads the document here for me. Uh, people can edit this here. Um, I'm kind of using it as a like, hey, let's get excited about this. Um, the other thing that you can add, which is kind of fun, is you can add, I do accept it. This, I don't think this has any practical application <laughs> beyond this, but this is what I like well, to do. Know, we have a master YouTube channel. So maybe yes, wanna... that's true. You, If you have a YouTube channel and you have training and things that you want, what I'm doing right now for sure doesn't have a practic <laughs> practical application. So you can search YouTube for, let's see, cute little kitten sneezes. And the cool thing about that, um, you know, it adds it adds it as a tab up here. It's going to buffer. Come on, we want to see the kitten sneezes. Um, and it basically, you can only add one, one video at a time. So it, at this point, you can't add multiple videos. But if you have a nice training, I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, but there's no cute, and, cute kitten sneezes today. Let's see. It's hard to see. It is. You all know where to find it. Um, the other thing that you can do is you've got all these different add-ons. Um, there's some third-party solutions involved here. Um, there's also something called, and I'm going to go back to actually Rockstars of Floor 24, bots. Polly is a bot, um, but you can actually 
add some more. So these are bots are basically third-party things that do algorithms or different things for you. You can see kayaks on here. Um, so take a look at this to see if anything uh, you know that you guys are using already could be pulled into this. If you had to book a lot of travel, it would be great to have kayak. It would be. Integrated. It would be. Yes. So there's there's the bots and there's the add-ons. And you can basically pin these um, to the top of your, your screen up here. And I saw in your last one it showed Power BI. And for our solutions delivery team, we showed two different dashboards in our teams. One is for um, all of our project tasks that we all owe all of our clients. And the other one are all of our support cases, so anything that's come into our help desk. And it shows who it belongs to, the age, um, and how much money is left on everybody's support contract. So it's a nice, really clear shot of mm -hmm. everybody's status. Yep. And you can also add, yep, that's right. <laughs> Shh. This my turn. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you can also add connectors, which it's kind of weird because there's add-ons, there's connectors, but um, you can go through here and it's very nicely categorized for you. Um, and, but this basically, you, it's a third-party solution. You usually have to have an associated account with it. So obviously you have to have a Twitter account um, to, to have this uh, Visual Studio Team Services. But there's quite a lot of options in here, um, marketing tools, customer support that you can integrate here and interact with. Um, the other cool thing is just like the planner, this does create um, a calendar for you. It creates a group uh, email. You can actually schedule straight from here. So if you go to schedule a meeting, you can create the meeting and invite folks, which is really nice. And it will show up on your Outlook, which I think is a cool feature. Um, the other fun thing with this, let's see, it's got me is the activity section where it will kind of give you a, a feed of what people are doing. Um, and it, it, it basically says, oh, this is how people are interacting on your team. And if you go back to your team, you can add replies and likes so it's very interactive. So somebody can say, um, you know, I still, I still don't like these options. Because they're, I don't know. Not me. I like them. And I could put, <laughs> oh, I could put a, a flying donut. It's National Donut yeah. Day. Is so it today? <gasps> it's <Wow>. amazing. <laughs> okay, calm down, everybody. Um, see, uh, here we've got some other things. Um, someone was saying, hey, you know, there's cake in the break room. <laughs> So um, that would work more in the general feed, not the an annual summer picnic. But it's a good, it's a great way to get people to kind of engage with each other and start to work together. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the files. So the files, you can add them. Um, this is actually creating a SharePoint uh, site for you, just like Planner does. It's very easy to upload your content. Um, and, you know, you can just pull your content in there, and um, if they attach it in a comment, it pulls it in here as well. Sorry, I'm trying to get to my, um, so you can just basically, oh, I've already done some of those, oops. You can basically pull this in, and you can open it right in SharePoint. Oh, no, it's not going to, Alan, S, S. Uh-oh. Hold on a second. Technical difficulties. Don't worry. I have it well in hand. <laughs> and there's your SharePoint site. It's going to help me do these intro things. Okay. So you have your SharePoint site. You can do all of the usual things with SharePoint. You can download this. Have People download this. Um, you can copy the link and share it out with folks. Um, you can look at the version history. That's one of the beauties of having SharePoint be the underlying, the underlying piece to this is that um, SharePoint by default now will save the last 500 versions, which might be overkill for large files. But if you have a lot of team members, if you have new team members, it's really nice to go back and look three versions ago and see if that's the one that you need to restore. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. That's kind of the, the long and the short of the teams and really the highlights 
um, of what I like to use it for. So <laughs> that's a great close. <laughs> um, I th uh, hold on a second. I think I, yeah, I didn't have it. So that's <laughs> so on to Kelly. I think we have. We don't have another. Do we have another poll before you start? Nope, not no, before I start. Okay. At the very end. Never mind me. No one allows me to manage stuff. But I would like to call out that we only have about nine minutes left. So if you have any questions, go ahead and start typing them in the, the chat box so that we can take a look at those when we're done. So first of all, I wanted to talk about um, Office 365 groups. How do I do that? There we go. So um, basically, uh, what was beneath Planner and Teams is a very pared down um, SharePoint site. The, the only beauty that is of Office 365 right now is the external sharing. It's on the roadmap for both um, Planner and for Teams, but as of this moment in time, you don't have an easy way to share an, an entire site with let's say your partners or your customers or somebody that you want to be able to log in and see the whole landing page. So maybe you're sharing a calendar, you're sharing a news feed and announcements, um, task lists or document libraries. It makes it nice so they can log on. They do not have to have a license. They don't have to have a live ID so you can add them with their Gmail or their Yahoo account and they can come in and, and work on this entire site with you. Um, the big caveat that I have noticed so far is because you're creating an Office 365 group, the names might be redundant to distribution groups you've already created. So we had the, the situation happen internal here. We have a solutions delivery alias so that when somebody wants to just send something to our entire team, they can email all of us at once. When I created an Office 365 group in our Microsoft Teams as solutions delivery, it created solutions delivery one um, as, a, as a group in our admin portal and it was almost deleted by somebody who thought that it was redundant and if somebody deletes this group it deletes everything so it'll delete all the files the lists the libraries and if you don't catch that within 30 days it's gone forever so just something to call out if your company is going to start using groups make sure that whoever is your global admin is aware of why those are there and that you have meetings to discuss why something would be deleted before it's time. So that's all I'm going to say about groups. It's just a, basically a SharePoint site. So on to SharePoint task lists. So we use internally, we use a combination of teams. And on the SharePoint site that the that team space is attached to, we have a task list that we live and die by for our customer deliverables. So I'm going to show you. Here's one that I set up. And let's go to actually go to this task list view. And so what I have done, this is a list I already created, and I added a couple of custom columns. So I wanted to say who the account was. Our customers have much more clever names than what I've used here. What type of project it was, and who our project manager is. And because I've done that, I can quickly come in here and I can filter and I'm going to say I only need to see SharePoint migration projects and all of my view is filtered really quickly for me. I'm going to clear that. Or if I'm a project manager, I can come in, let's pretend I'm Allie, and see the things that I need to make sure are on track. I could also just create a view. If I'm Allie and I'm in here every single day, I'm going to create a custom view that says, just show me things where I'm the project manager so I don't even have to do this filtering. So I want to show how easy it is. Well, first let's add one more task, and I'll show you all the fields that are there. So we're going to say um, create SOW for workshop. We need to get this done today. And we'll say Amy A is in charge of that. She is not complete at all. If there were any predecessors, so we could pick if we needed to do something before we could do the SOW, we can set a priority. It's not started. We pick the account. 
this is actually, this is a business process workshop, so pick the right one right away, and we're going to say Ali is the project manager on this. So it's really, really quick to add new tasks, but I want to show how quick it is to create one of these from scratch. So we're going to add an app. It's right here. If you ever don't see what you're looking for on this page, just use the search and it'll pull back the, it should pull back what you're looking for if it exists. If not, it'll direct you to look in the store to see if there's a free download there. So, another clever name. And when I cl click on that and I click new, these are all the fields that SharePoint automatically pulls back for you. If we wanted to change these priorities, maybe um, you know you have a, a panic or a, you know whatever you want. You can have these priorities be whatever you want. You can add as many columns as you want. Maybe you want to add phases where it's design, define, develop. You could add another column for that. But this gets you started. Within 30 seconds, your team can have a task list. It's very, very handy. And with that, we only have three minutes left. So let's go to our next poll. And we are doing, um, we have a three-part webinar series set up right now, but we are happy to do um, any number of, of webinars. So we would love to know from you um, what you would like to learn about more. So let me open up this poll. And we would like to know if you would like to know anything more about Teams, Planner, Groups, Task Lists. Um, if you'd like to know anything else, please feel free to contact us um, at solutions at .com. And I am going to hand it back to Cassidy to see if we have any to, questions. Yeah, see if we have any questions and to read the, the poll results. So we're showing about 50% planner and 50% Office 365 group. So we'll definitely um, note that and see how we can share more information with you guys in the future. Um, so why Amaxra? Um, this is what I like to call kind of our brag board. We have a plethora of different awards that we've won. Um, one of our proudest accomplishments was 2016 Supplier of the Year award um, in diversity with Microsoft. Um, so we like to offer proven expertise and ongoing um, support. And um, these are a few of our partnerships and clients so you guys can kind of see some of the folks that we work with um, around the area. And next steps for you guys, um, if you're interested in learning more what Office 365 can do for your business, you can contact me and I'd be happy to book a 30-minute meeting with um, someone from our solutions delivery team to go over um, how we can help you guys. Um, we also do something called a CIE experience, which is a half of a day um, in-person event at your business, or we could do it here if you wanted to, um, where we bring all Microsoft equipment to you guys and we really allow a hands-on session where you get to test drive these Office 365 tools, learn productivity, improving tips and tricks, and um, it's just a really great experience and it's for your team so you guys can ask questions and that sort of thing. Um, if you're interested in scheduling a CA experience for your company, you can again contact me and I will send you more information and get a date reserved or booking a little over a month out for that. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to contact me as soon as possible. Um, we do have a few questions here on the board, so I'm going to address those. Um, what is the mobile experience of... One second, my... It's not easy to read Of Planner Teams and SharePoint. So what Microsoft Teams does have a mobile app that is really, really um, easy to use. I don't know that Planner has a mobile app. I but they're getting ready to add Planner mm -hmm. to Teams, mm -hmm. so that'll solve that problem. Does the, and it says, does the task, did the task list come with the site? Or did, did you, you add the task, uh, a task app? No, that is built into SharePoint. 
So you could add it also if you had created a, a group site mm -hmm. with Teams or Planner. You can add it. You could add a task list to that SharePoint site. Yep. Great. Well, we hope you guys found this a valuable use of your time, and feel free to contact me if there's anything we can help you guys with in the future. Um, we'll stay on for just a few more minutes in case anybody has any other questions. Otherwise, hopefully you guys jotted down my email address, and I'll follow up with you guys shortly um, and provide you each a copy of the deck, and um, we can go from there. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great weekend.